for the proposal to expand Euros to the whole of London, who's the decision maker to do that or not do that? Uh, me. So it's your decision whether yeah. that proceeds or not. Thanks. Um, the, um, my question is about the cost of that. So the uh, independent impact assessment, which you referred to earlier, um, says that it will make no difference, that this expansion will make no difference on climate change, uh, no difference on particulate emissions or particulate uh, quality in the air, and very minor difference in uh, nitrogen dioxide levels. When you look at the hardship that that's going to impose on people, how, how in your judgment is that uh, worth proceeding with? So I, I don't recognize that the no nitrogen dioxide or particular matter or carbon. Okay, well, so on the independent impact assessment, uh, table 9.5 on page 165 says that to take two places at random, uh, Sutton's particulate level will go from 9.5 without the scheme to 9.5 with the scheme. Croydon's will go from 9.6 without the scheme to 9.6 with the scheme, so that's no change. Uh, nitrogen dioxide levels from 19.5 to 19.2, Sutton 19.0 to 18.7, Croydon, those are very typical levels. No real change in particular yeah, levels. That's all right. And 1.5, so table 9 point, uh, sorry, table um, 9.5 on page 165 of the independent of the, of the integrated impact assessment. Those are the figures. Right, so, so I'll look at that particular page. I've not got that page in my, in my bundle, as you'd, as you'd appreciate. But no, so we've already seen reductions in all those things uh, in relation to central. Uh, 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 in inner, we've seen reductions in nitrogen uh, oxide. And the expert analysis is further reductions in nitrogen dioxide should it be expanded. And there'll be further reductions in particulate matter and carbon emissions. I'm more than happy to look at the, the table that uh, the member refers to. That is not. Sorry, I'm not sure. This, this is the in integrated impact assessment that is on the page where people go to to do the consultation. Those are the figures on that table. Yeah. I've given you the table number and the page number. I, I don't understand how you're quibbling with those figures. That is what they're saying will right. be the estimate. Well, of what the I'm impact. saying is I don't recognize those figures. But what I can tell you is we've seen both in central London uh, ULES and in the inner London ULES a reduction in those things. And the projections are a further reduction should the ULES be extended and exp expanded. Because we can see there are fewer non-compliant vehicles, because we can see there are fewer vehicles overall, and because the air quality monitors are showing a big improvement in air quality. So it sounds like the decision that you're going to make to proceed is going to be based on ignoring the integrated impact assessment figures. Well, no. Uh, the, the decision I make is based upon the integrated uh, impact assessment, based upon the responses to consultations and other information that, that I've received and, and will uh, receive. Uh, but what I'm telling you is the evidence so far is that the policy has led to better air in central London and inner London. We want all, uh, and uh, by the way, uh, on, the, on the borders of outer London, we want all of London to benefit from clean air, not just those in central and inner, inner. So you're referring to the six month uh, review of the previous expansion that was published on Tuesday? When you um, say the previous re research, is that what you're that's the most recent research of an well, existing thing that's been We've got published. research that starts from 2017 going mm. forward. So 2017 to 2019, then the research from uh, October 2021 up until uh, now. Uh, and there's a various work also done that's set out in various of the pieces of work that have already been published. But the document that came out on Tuesday said that for all the reasons that are entirely obvious to everyone, e.g. a pandemic, the fuel price shortage last year, the price spike in fuel currently, uh, there's no way to establish whether the reductions in traffic, which are what's caused the changes in air quality, are due to ULES or not. No, what, what the report says, and it's peer-reviewed, is, is, is unarguable uh, that there's been a reduction in nitrogen dioxide. Yes, but the question is why is th that's because of the reduction in traffic levels. What it says is there's no way to attribute that reduction in traffic levels to the ULES. But, but because it says there's on page 12. Because there's a return to pre-pandemic levels of traffic, you'd expect to see a commensurate increase in uh, poor quality air. You've not seen that because what you're seeing is fewer non-compliant non vehicles. So 67,000 fewer uh, uh, non-compliant vehicles must have an impact on air quality. 44,000 fewer diesel cars driving around must have an impact on air quality. 20,000 fewer vehicles overall okay. must have an impact. And then you go to 20% reduction in NOx, there's the impact. But the reduction in non-compliant vehicles would have occurred anyway, some level of that from cars naturally being replaced. Six, seven and, thousand. And the, as I say, the report that you're talking about that came out on Tuesday specifically says on page 12, so it's limitations of, the, of this analysis. It says there's no way to tell how much of the reduction is due to, to the pandemic, how much was due to the price spike, and how much was due to uh, fuel price surge, and so we need to keep monitoring. So it flatly contradicts what you're saying. Uh, we are so it doesn't give me confidence that you're going to rely on other documents no, if they don't say what you want them to say. And we are monitoring. Uh, just like, for example, 
uh, we saw in uh, inner in London a reduction uh, by 37% of uh, NOx uh, just from the central London uh, ultra-low uh, emission zone. That 37% uh, is not completely attributable to, to, to uh, the units in central London because some of that is because of cleaner buses. Some of that is because more people are using public transport. So I accept in relation to some of the stats, you can't say they're all due to the ULES, but you can't run away from the fact that the expansion of ULES uh, over six months has led to reduced nitrogen dioxide and also returns to pre- with, but it says you cannot attribute it to. That's what it says. Any uh, return to pre-pandemic levels of traffic but not a return to pre it also says there hasn't been a return pollution. to pre pandemic Sorry? traffic. It, the report also says there hasn't been a return to pre pandemic traffic. Uh, in term, uh, you, you referred to people switching to public transport. So the integrated impact assessment also says, uh, page 87, it points out the obvious fact that it says for inner London, the bottom 20% most deprived areas still have relatively high levels of access to public transport, while in outer London there are much larger areas with low PTAL scores in areas of high deprivation, which is also where it points out is where you find more non-compliant vehicles. Um, do you not think that undermines what you're talking about, which is this, it induces a switch to public transport? It's not going to happen if there's no public transport alternative. Instead, it will just impose a cost of living burden. Do you, do you recognize yeah, that? You, got, in you, you, you need to have decent public transport. So one of the things we're trying to do is to uh, improve public transport in outer uh, London. Which is really important by to, next August to give to give people uh, to give people the alternatives. Well, it depends where uh, that there is a paucity of public transport that needs improvement is. In relation to the point about so, sorry, so my residents in, in Croydon and Sutton, if they have this imposed on them, what improvements will there be by August next year when you're proposing to bring this in? Thirteen well, months away. A lot of uh, your residents in Croydon and Sutton who are poor don't own a vehicle. And yeah, a lot they of them do. Those are the ones who are hit by your cost of living charge. So, so, so the cost of living charge you know, is now what they're going to call it. Uh, we, saw, yeah. we saw similar arguments in 2021. We saw how that well, movie it ended. Becomes, look, it becomes apparent because when Assemblymember Ahmad asked you about cost of living, you showed great sympathy for people who were struggling. Yeah. Well, when, when I well, point I was, out, or when anyone gonna, points out... I was going to answer the, your question when and I, you interrupted it with the, a charge. The imposition of this charge and the, and the effect that that will have in terms of hardship on people who are struggling, who will struggle under the burden of your ULES charge, you seem to show no sympathy for them at all. Is it my turn now? Okay. So, so uh, if you look at the car ownership in our city, uh, almost half of Londoners don't own a car, uh, and it's the poorest Londoners who don't own a car who suffer the worst consequences of air quality, including in Croydon and uh, Sutton. In fact, uh, we had an exchange, uh, Senator Fortune and I, a couple of MQTs ago, where I think we yeah, agreed I at the end. I checked it. You were wrong. Uh, 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 Senator Garrett, can we let the mayor answer the question, please? This is not a two-way conversation, by the way. It is a two-way conversation, and he's no. not answering the question. Can we just give him a, an opportunity to answer the question, please? Do you well, recognise the cost of living burden? That's the question. We're, we're if you're not going to answer it, there's no point spending time listening to you talking about something okay, else. Let's move on, Chair. Just, yes, what's, what's Good the point? idea. Let's move on, Chair. Thank you. What's the point? Uh, Assembly Mayor Garrett, I mean, you ridiculous. must have the patience to listen to answers, and even the answers which you may not like. He's behaving like, okay. he's behaving like Jacob Rees-Mogg. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's just <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are we allowing that Mayor, kind of remark? Th is that in order I think, under Mr. your Mayor, regime? We, we, we better press on, Rakim, okay, yeah. because I think I, we, we've exhausted respond. this. I'm happy to respond, but I, know, I can't I know. be interrupted every 30 seconds. I mean. yes. okay, I am going to bring in Assemblyman Duval, 